All right. Y'all know what's popping already, and if you don't, you're about to know. Yesterday, we got the big-ass release notes. Um, excuse my French, but that shit fucking went hard, brother. And today... Oh, let me fucking open up the proper tab, man. So this... Uh, you'll see here, we got our boys summoning the roadmap, and then the roadmap came out. So we got the roadmap. The roadmap, man. Uh, also, it's funny that Brock's post not pinned and random dudes pinned. Well, I guess he's not random, dude. He's also Amazon Games. Huh. No communication there. <laughs> That's funny. Anyways, roadmap's out. Uh, this shit fucking bangs, basically, dude. Um, like, I don't mean to be the bearer of good news, but shit. I'm just saying, basically, nobody has no damn reason to complain about this shit no more, because this shit fucking great. Now, I'll shut the fuck up and actually get into this shit for you guys. Excuse my language, but goddamn, this is just, I, I'm excited, man. Okay. We're excited to share the third and final part of the 2023 roadmap. Includes a major plan content pieces arriving in an Acacia during the rest of the year. Uh, join all these boys for the update. We're not going to watch the video because we're just going to read through it. Um, it's basically the same thing, just instead of them reading it, it's me. And uh, clearly I'm better because I said so. And yeah. But basically, updates to August. Now, I did say that... You shouldn't count on these changes, the Chaos Dungeon and the Guardian Raid changes, but I did say it was a possibility. Turns out that that possibility was true. Again, I say this to temper expectations because it's not good to assume that something is coming when there's been no mention concretely one way or the other. Um, it's always better to be cautiously, you know, optimistic in my opinion, but... For all you diehard believers, you guys did it. We are getting the Chaos Dungeon changes and the Guardian Raid changes. Basically, the TLDR and the Chaos Dungeon things is... Um, reducing them to one a day wouldn't fix the problem, which I agree with. Uh, so they're just trying to make it more enjoyable to do. So they made all those changes uh, to make it a bit smoother to play through. Uh, and all the tweaks all together reduces the time to... Play a single dungeon by a roughly 25%, which assume it takes four minutes for a chaos dungeon now. 25% off that, you do the math, you know what I'm saying? Um, but basically, time saved is time saved, and QOL is QOL. That's mostly what I like about the chaos dungeon change, because again, I'm a sicko, I enjoy chaos dungeons, I grind them all day long, I don't really care, I'm chill. Good time to throw some anime on the side, you know what I mean? Dirty weebs or a unite. Guardian Raids, one a day. Very good. Increased accessibility to cards. Uh, we want to continue to improve this by reducing content fatigue. We'll start by increasing the base supply of cards, along with increasing the supply of cards in Chaos Dungeons and Guardian Raids. We plan to increase other sources of supplies, such as adjusting the frequency of wandering vendors. Very good. Cards are a very big issue for newer players. In September, they have Jumpstart servers. Um, this is pretty good. Essentially, I uh, reading this, what... I will try to summarize it as is what I think they're going for is something like a seasonal server, um, maybe akin to something like a Diablo season or a BDO season. And this will be a separate server, and this will be mostly to sort of, well, I mean, they, I think they sum it up best. Uh, by bringing together a big group of Jumpstart players at the same time, we expect the early and mid-game to feel much more lively, which is a big complaint of newer players, because right now, early mid-game is completely dead, because there's no reason for people to be doing it. Um, and to reduce the amount of gatekeeping and raid lobbies, which again is true, if everybody's quote-unquote new, then everybody's equally gatekept, right? We recognize the game encountered many challenges at initial lawns for steep progression curve, bot stability issues. We've made serious strides in addressing these. Yes, you have. And feel confident that the Western service is in a good place to bring players back. Agree. And I think jumpstart servers are actually a very good way to do this. Um, but basically, there's going to be a jumpstart server available in each region. You'll get a Southvern power pass to jumpstart a character immediately to 1415. 
Uh, Jumpstart servers will be their own thing, isolated from other servers. So independent matchmaking, party finder, marketplace, etc. Like everything is going to be their own, which again makes sense. This allows restarting players to have an independent experience that's unaffected by existing servers. Mm -hmm. They'll also get materials that provide faster vertical and horizontal progression, honing materials, card packs, more, etc., etc. Benefit from ongoing Super Makoko Express event that kicks off, which goes up to 1540. Jumpstart players will also be able to get an abundance of free honing materials and a special event helping them get to 1580. And I assume... Uh, with the extra information that they will be disclosing in September, it'll be more about the nitty-gritty stuff, like, s sort of, like, what's going to end up happening to the servers, because eventually I do think the server will get merged into the region that they are a part of. Um, like a seasonal sort of thing, if that makes sense. We did get Yaz's Jar, finally. Um, personally, I'm a bit salty about this still, because... Essentially, nothing got changed except Amethyst Shards, and I... I mean, they do say they're going to add different things to the Amethyst Shard shop because of this, but also... Eh. I mean... Eh. We'll see. Because all it says that they're adding... They're adding new purchase options to the Amethyst shop, including Silver Dawn skins and various reagents for players to customize their skins. So, dyes? If that's all they're adding, this is kind of not great. And... The core concept of Yaza's Jar hasn't changed at all, like, the way it functions. So, I would have rather had this a year ago because I wanted the Soulfist skin. Um, people who are going to gamble are going to gamble, man. Do I think it's the best way to do it? Obviously not. But, you give me the choice of not having it versus having it, I pick having it every single time because, again... The people who want to interface with the gambling system can, and then I will just buy it with gold off the auction house. I don't really care. Uh, I just want the skin, because I think the skin looks fire. I No, I don't give a shit about the extra, like, 0.5 or 1% stat bonus. Like, who cares? This is irrelevant, man. I just want to look cool. Affection report ranks. Um, looks like... Pyrene in Nineveh. Ooh, sheesh some very good candidates there primal island battle royale cool i will not be doing that because i don't give a hoot arc pass new arc pass in september question mark cool uh looks like in october we're getting a plecia Ple plecia plecia uh it's a new continent similar of that uh it's a continuation i do believe the story of Plesia begins in Lutera. I wonder how you're supposed to say this. Is it Plesia or Plekia? Ple Ple Plesia? Mm hmm. I don't know, man. Players must solve the surrounding mysteries surrounding the Vedish family, the priests of Sacria. Oh, cool. Very cool. Uh, you'll need to finish the Plesia story before Voldus. Very good. Voldus is coming very soon. Caligos Trial Guardian Raid. Cool. Hell, Caligos. Uh, November, big news. We got Soul Eater. My goodness gracious. Uh, Soul Eater coming out very soon. I mean, shit, Korea literally just got Soul Eater. Um, so, people who are always saying, oh, we'll never catch up to Korea. Are you sure about that, homie? This shit's kind of bussin'. Uh, progression events for Soul Eater class will be released to help players level up the new character, including an Express and Power Pass. So we are getting another Express and Power Pass with Soul Eater. Uh, and again, Soul Eater comes out in November. Uh, December, we're getting Voldis, which is very big. It's the next continent after Plekio. Uh Basically, though, the more important thing is... The Voldus Abyss Dungeon. It's 1600 item level for normal, 1620 for hard. This should be fairly doable, especially once we get into a con gear. Uh, don't worry about it. It seems spooky now, but new a con gear makes this less spooky. Uh, and elixirs are coming, which is massive, bro. Uh, I don't know super in depth the elixir system. I am a person who. While I know what is coming from Korea, I don't look into things super deeply because, I mean, I don't know. Like, I know the gist of it, but I I, I want to get into the meat and potatoes myself. 
And once we get it onto NA, I will take a look. But basically, elixirs are uh, a, a system similar uh, to like bracelets. Basically gives you a bunch of power. Uh, top end will be very expensive, but good enough will be very achievable for people. Basically, elixirs are a new system. Drastically increased player combat skills or abilities. So, more stats, good shit. Imbuing their gear with new powerful effects. Epic elixirs will be obtainable through normal mode of Ivory Tower a Dungeon, which is the Voldus Abyss Dungeon. And legendary elixirs can be earned via hard mode of Voldus Dungeon. Once obtained, elixirs need to be refined and imbued onto a player's gear. To refine an elixir, you need to get a catalyst by paying gold and chaos stones. Catalysts are also acquirable through Wandering Merchant and Voldus. Refining process requires a certain amount of gold and catalysts. You have a set amount of tries for each refining process, 11 tries for epic and 14 for legendary. Uh, and players can use the advice from the three stages of the tower to pick the best outcome possible. You'll need to think carefully, use the advice well. It's important to extend the logic of the system. There are powerful set bonuses to aim for when special conditions are met. The refining process is unlike any other experience in Lost Ark, relies on a certain amount of luck, but it also requires the players to think carefully and logically plan for the best outcome. What? <coughs> Excuse me. God damn. <clears throat> Ugh. Once the elixir is done refining, sorry guys, players can imbue the elixir to their equipment to get bonus effects. These effects, <clears throat> uh, these types of bonuses that elixirs provide categorize broadly into offensive, defensive, and utility. Players can choose a maximum of five abilities for each elixir and refine two of the five. So there will be ten abilities once refining is done, two for each equipment without the weapon. Basically, that's a lot of words. I'm going to sort of assume this is similar to like uh like reforging or um like re-rolling in diablo 3 at a mystic like just to super simplify it i'm sure it's going to be much more in depth than that but that's how i'm simplifying it in my brain going into it again i'm sure you can look this up if you want to get a sort of preview of it from like koreans koreans have made many videos of this stuff and another arc pass in December. Looking ahead, we're excited to witness player experience the unique events, explore new parts of Urkasia, battle the new PvP events, blah, blah, blah. Uh, stay tuned to see the full release notes for new content, etc. Store updates, bug fixes, blah, blah, blah. Basically, this shit's fire. Y'all need to uh, respect Lost Ark. That's really all I got for you guys. I'm excited. And honestly, if you're a fan of Lost Ark, I think you should be too. This is very good for the game. And me being positive. See, I've been cautiously optimistic, you know, man. And that's because I like the game and I I can see what they are doing and what they are trying to achieve. Um, yes, you can always say, oh, well, this should have been done months ago and yeah like i agree but reality of the world is man not everything goes how it should sometimes and as far as things go lost ark itself is a game that i enjoy a lot and many other people do too and it's never fun to see a game die even if you don't like it you should always want things to succeed especially in the gaming sphere that's just my opinion though um, cause it, like, it does you no good if a game dies. Like, if somebody enjoys it, why would you want the thing that they enjoy to die just because you don't like it? I don't know. Anyways, I'm gonna get out of your hair. Thank you guys so much for watching. Like the video if you like it. Dislike it if you dislike it. Leave a comment down below. Letting me know your thoughts on these patches because good God is this shit fire. Thank you to my YouTube members as always. Consider becoming a member. Help support the channel. Because I ain't going nowhere. I'm making content for life, baby. Um, thank you guys. I'll see you all in the next one. Bye.